All right, ladies and gentlemen, so um, I'm like 34 minutes late into saying this, but I changed a bit of a screen resolution for this particular playthrough. Um, see, I was playing well, on I saw him. You, using the uh, standard you. You box size, way. like 800 by 600, uh, uh, like I usually do with my other recordings, but unfortunately, it couldn't keep the the game screen couldn't keep the resolution. It only still had the 1280 by 720 thing. So I decided that you know, with this game as well as you know, The Walking Dead, I will be running into. Um, I'll start. I'll start uploading videos at 720. Uh, it's not going to be in full-fledged HD, mind you, but at least it'll be widescreen and it'll be tolerable to watch than, you know, what the past projects I've... Uh, but, um, yeah, anyway, so there's that. Um, cool. Very cool. I haven't thought about this place for years. The missus made me tear it down back in 71. Said the movies were corrupting the younger generation. It was all nonsense, of course. I spent countless evenings here in my youth, and it never turned me into a hoodlum. Nope. Say, remember Public Enemy? In fact, I've actually went to the movie theaters not too long ago, watched the uh, third part of the Hobbit movie. It's actually not bad. It was, it was actually a decent film. I actually loved it. That's what we're here for. You've got to get young you to see Frankenstein. Right, of course. The film that was supposed to set off a chain reaction in my imagination, inspire me with a notion that would launch my scientific career. You've still got no memory of what that notion was? Well, how could I? It happened in the brain of a different Emmett Brown. An Emmett Brown now erased by the shifting sands of time. Huh. Luckily for us, I do know something about my own brain. Having lived in it for the past 70 plus years, once we get my younger self be inspired by that movie, nothing will distract him from his proper... <gasps> Great Scott, will you look at that? The town square? Huh. It's just like I remember it. Only dirtier. Oh, the old courthouse. Come on now, Doc, you need to... Go huh? inside and check it out. First rule of time travel, Doc, never allow your other self to catch sight of you. It could cause reality to collapse or something. You mean? Right behind you. Don't peek. Huh. Go on. I'll let you know when you're gone. And don't forget your Carl Sagan. The billions and billions guy? The suspected arsonist. Huh? Just go with it. Alrighty, let's go on ahead and say hi to young Emmett Brown there. And thank God I can run around in this episode. Oh my God, you have no idea what the limited space can do to me. Oh my, it is so nice to run around here, but uh, I've gone up a little bit overboard there. Let's go ahead and speak with uh, Emmett Brown here. Hello, Emmett. Sonny, you do show up at the oddest moments. Where have you been hiding? Uh, I've been hiding somewhere. Oh, you know, here and there, you're a little hard to pin down yourself. I went looking for you last night, but... I believe I was off entertaining a beautiful lady. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you know, I never really got a chance to thank you. Well, I'm sure you would have escaped Ken on your own. Yeah, oh, sure, I'm grateful for that, but no, I'm talking about Edna. It's funny to think of now, but until that crisis, I actually thought Edna and I disliked one another. <laughs> imagine. Yeah, imagine. Yeah, well, sometimes first impressions are right. The thing is, you shouldn't let Edna distract you from, you know, the business at hand. Finishing your project for the expo and going to see Frankenstein. Oh, pshaw. I'm far too busy for movies these days. Oh, boy. Uh, and as for my project, it's practically done. The rocket car? The rocket car? Boy, are you out of date. I've junked the rocket what? car. What? But more trouble than it's worth. I'll never figure out a propulsion system that does what I want it to do. And besides, its social utility is practically non-existent. So... What? No, no, you were really onto something with the rocket car. You've just gotta... The mental alignment meter is a much more worthy project. Mental oh, alignment what? meter. It was Edna's idea, and she's really been cracking the whip to get me to complete it in time for the expo. Emmett, I'm a little confused here. 
I've only had one date. What day is it? Why, it's opening day. The opening day of the expo. Which reminds me, I'd better skedaddle back to the lab. If Edna catches me dawdling, there'll be heck to pay. Catch you around, Crockett. October 12th. Doc. Okay, running back to the court. Uh, wow, you're so zoomed in. Why is that, Marty McFly? Alright, well, whatever. Let's go ahead and check this out. Come to think of it, it is a bit brisk for August. Oh, we're two months late. The expo's about to start, and Teenage U is already in over his head with Edna. I always did have a tendency to plunge into things. Let's plunge into the DeLorean and get to the right date. Oh, no, it's far too risky. Remember how I was late picking you up in 86? Yeah. That should have been a tip-off. Something is horribly wrong with the time circuits, and the problem appears to be getting worse. If we try to jump now, we could find ourselves stranded in a Cenozoic age. Oh, or worse, the Mesozoic. Then we're stuck? For the time being. I'll look into the problem and see what I can do. In the meantime, you can go to work on the other problem. Yep. Right. Sounds I'll like a plan. I'll go to the lab and see if I can talk teenage you out of... Impossible. If young me is already as infatuated as you say, you're not going to be able to talk him out of anything. Believe me, I remember. Better to focus on the more clear-headed half of the couple. Edna, where can I find her? Where do you think? I'll drive. The DeLorean should still function adequately as a means of... Alright, well, thankfully, we are going to be heading to the newer hub of the game, ladies and gentlemen. It won't be the usual hubs that we've explored in the second or, you know, the third game. But we'll actually be at the Hill Valley High School, which is, you know, it's interesting. I like it. You were right. There she is. My soon-to-be ex-future wife is nothing if not predictable. Do I really have to talk to her? I mean, couldn't I just hang out until you fix the time circuits and... No. I'll talk to her. You better get the DeLorean out of sight before someone... Hey, you! Quit blocking the drive! All Car of the Future contestants need to report to the North Tent! Why not? Good luck! All right. Let's not bug uh, Doc Brown. Let's go on ahead and speak with Edna. Spell it B R O W N. It's not exactly an obscure name. I still don't see it on the list. I'm sorry. Oh, for the love. Let me try this one more time. This is the Hill Valley Science Expo, right? First annual. Indeed. The purpose of our fair is to showcase cutting-edge technology. That's right, and to burnish Hill Valley's reputation as a forward-thinking community. And yet, you want to exclude the maker of the most revolutionary breakthrough of all. It's not that I want to, but... Oh, dear. Mr. Crockett! Hello. You do pop up at the oddest times. What are you doing here? I'm doing jumping jacks. I need to... Whatever it is, I hope you don't have to deal with Mr. Stonewall here. His sole function seems to be preventing people from accomplishing their business. Honestly, with him keeping the books, it's a wonder the Tannen gang got as far as they did. Huh. Uh... Have you seen Emmett? Uh... No. Uh, no. Oh, then you've heard all about his big breakthrough, the mental alignment meter. Isn't it exciting? And to think, he didn't even realize the import of his discovery until I pointed it out to him. I is that know so? Anyone like him, so oblivious to his own potential. Really? I don't wanted to talk to you about Emmett and his potential. Funny, I didn't spot it myself at first. In fact, for the longest time, I thought I didn't even like him. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, those gut instincts are important. If you disliked him right off the bat. Oh, but I didn't know him then. Now I know him inside and out. Yeah, but... I appreciate your concerns, Mr. Crockett, but I can take care of myself. I know what I'm looking for in a man, and it so happens Emmett fits the bill to a T. That's Emmett Brown. Rhymes with clown, which I'm beginning to think you are. 
Just a simple mix-up, I'm sure. I've no doubt of that. Ahem. <clears throat> Let's try and speak with her some more. It's your bill of requirements for a man. Yes? What would that list be, exactly? You'd make a good reporter, Mr. Crockett, you know that? Well, his physical appearance, for one thing. Emmett may not be Clark Gable, but he cleans up surprisingly well. I gave him my grandfather's white suit to wear at the expo. Oh, you should see him in it. He looks positively radiant. Looks good in a suit. Got it. And he's completely devoted to me. Really? That's important. I've got no time or tolerance for playboys. Faithful as a Labrador. Check. Thirdly, and most important... Yes? Well, his mind, of course. It's brilliant, and it's virtuous through and through. His own mind map shows him to be a model citizen. Good brain, I see. And if it turned out that you were mistaken about any of these qualities... Say, what's your game? Uh, just curious, just trying to understand the female mind. Well, understand this. I'm not some faint-hearted girl who'd run away at the first hint of trouble. I've made a big investment in Emmett. Not money, but I've sunk all my ambitions into him. I'd have to be thoroughly disillusioned before I'd call it quits with Emmett. Got it? Uh-huh. Now, Mr. Cub Reporter, is there anything else? Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. I was, uh, pulled away, but now I'm back. Okay, so... let me see here. What the hell are we doing? Uh, what's a mental alignment meter? What the heck is this mental alignment meter of Emmett's? Oh, it's an absolutely revolutionary invention! Measures a person's affinities. What he's attracted to, what he's repulsed by, that sort of thing. Interesting. And it really works? Well, of course! What's the point of inventing something that doesn't work? Or, anyway, it works well enough for my purposes. Oh, really now? Now we know how you run. So you say Emmett only has eyes for you? Absolutely. It's almost embarrassing how devoted he is to me. Well, it's good to hear he's finally settling down. Yes. Settling down? You know, ready to stop playing the field, as it were. Playing the... Oh, you're joking! Hmm. You say you know Emmett as a model citizen, but you don't know him as well as I do. Did you know he once cheated some Libyans out of plutonium? Plutonium? What would Libyans want with plutonium? I'm sure he had a very good reason. Huh. Emmett's mind map demonstrates conclusively his brain is oriented toward virtue. I see. Rather hard for me to picture Emmett as a chick magnet. Chick magnet? A guy who gets the girls, you know, motors running. Ugh. Motors? Who makes them, y you know. You mean a chic? Yeah. Well, it's a matter of taste, I suppose, but when he's properly pomaded and decked out in my grandfather's white suit, Emmett just glows. Makes my heart flutter a bit just to picture him. And that's why you don't do the hanky-panky and get the girl. <laughs> Whatever, I'm done talking to you. Let's get the fuck out of here. That's all the questions I got. Very well, then. Oh, hi. How are you doing? Daddy, you see my Orioli? You mean this? Yeah, thanks. She gets to come and go freely, and I'm forced to wait. I love it. Well, let's go ahead and say hi to her. How's it going, Trixie? It's been a while. Like a good few weeks, couple months, maybe. I bid thee welcome. To all who approach these hallowed halls, I bid thee welcome. To all who... Oh, hiya, kid. Say, aren't you the fellow who... Got you to turn on Kid Tannen? You bet. You look younger without your mustache. That was a dirty trick, you know, making me think Kid had gone and iced Artie. I'm sorry, but it was the only way I could... Ah, uh, forget about it. I'm trying to. Yesterday's in the past. That's my motto. You gotta live for today. Well, that's a good motto to have. So what are you doing down here anyway? Do you wish to pull the levers that control the future? I wish to pull your uh, levers. If you know what I mean. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And all that. Oh, uh, yeah, that's actually why I'm here. Okay, what you doing? So who are you supposed to be? Don't you know your homework? I am Techni Muse of Progress. 
<laughs> you can tell by the lightning bolts. Not really. I must have slept through that class. I'm supposed to be a goddess like. I'm the one who inspires all the great men who make the discoveries. And women, too. Leave us not forget Madame Curie. I never would. So you work for the expo? Yeah, ain't it a kick? I greet all the important guests. And on the final day, I get to bestow the golden sundial on the winning contestant. Nice. Techni, Muse of Progress. Not the bad gig. Audie got it for me. It's my entree into respectability. Hmm. So... Artie works here, huh? So, Artie's working for the Expo, too, huh? Oh, Artie's doing swell! The papers made a big deal of him testifying against Kid. People have been beating down his door ever since the trial. The Expo's darn lucky they could get him. Hmm. So, what does he exactly do here? What's Artie's job? Oh, he's a real high muckety-muck at the Expo. He's in charge of all the money, and the hiring and firing. Hey, not bad. You're telling me, and super respectable, too. It's a real relief for him to have a job where the boss never pulls a gun on him. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess. It's good to see that you and Artie. Are I wouldn't know that head. experience firsthand, but uh... okay. and if things keep going the way they're going, we may be more than just friends before you know it. Whoa! Well, don't get too serious too fast. Nah, we're keeping things casual for now. For now, I'm sure Grandma will appreciate that. Hmm. How's kids' trial going? Slowly. You know what they say. The wheels of justice grind slowly, but infinitely fine. Except in Hill Valley, where they don't move at all. What? Nothing. It's just, you know, something I heard once. So no regrets about turning them in? None at all. I should have known better than to take up with them in the first place. But what can I say? I was dumb. I let myself get taken in by his charm. 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 So, what's the story of this expo, then? His idea was to put a science and technology expo in Hill Valley. Beats me. Audie says it's all bread and circuses. But I ain't seen a single clown yet today. Ha! <laughs> You're a funny girl. Alrighty. Uh... I'm gonna need an idea here. Uh, how about... You help me make Edna jealous. Listen, I've got a proposal for you. I have this friend, right? No dice. I'm only seeing Audie now. It's not like that. See, my friend's in a relationship with Edna Strickland. Oh, poor schmuck. I wouldn't wish her on anyone. Didn't you see where I'm coming from? He won't listen to reason, but I thought she might call it off if she thought he and you were, you know. Ah, you are an evil imp, ain't ya? Sometimes a guy's gotta resort to underhanded tricks. What do you say? Sorry. Ah. Oh. Edna might be a pill, but if I play dirty tricks on every dame who disapproves of me, well, well, I'd, I'd play a lot of dirty tricks. Besides, such stunts are beneath the dignity of Techni, Muse of Progress. Really, now? Alright, well, I guess I, uh, tried asking. See ya, Trixie. From this chamber of wonders, we bid you a fond adieu. Alrighty.